Hi there. Well, um, I've just been watching some of Baba Ali's uh, video logs, and I find them excellent, very entertaining, amazingly well edited, and I've handed to you. Do uh, present a very attractive uh, proposition um, in terms of promoting Islam. My name is Neil Richardson. I'm a Christian. I live in England, and I've been uh, a little bit inspired by Jay Smith and some of his video, video logs uh, to respond by video rather than just by text to uh, some of the things you guys have been saying. And maybe we can uh, keep this debate going, Christians and Muslims, hopefully on friendly terms, but always referring back to the Bible and the Quran as our source of authority. Um, I noticed you do quote the Quran, but I think only once in uh, your tenth episode, Baba Ali. Um, about there being no compulsion in religion, but I am delighted to hear you quoting that verse because that is very true. And um, it's always sad, isn't it, when people are forced uh, to stay in a particular religion or forced to convert back to a religion or forced to convert to a religion. And I'm sure that you would deplore that wherever that happens. Anyway, I just wanted to address a few of the points that you made in your video to say that, um, of course, uh, every religion has a lot of people in it that are hypocrites, that are bad representatives of it. You spoke about people who would cheat in school, uh, lust after women, that wouldn't pray, they just chill out, they would do illegal things, and, uh, be hypocrites basically. And that of course is true in, in any religion or philosophy, wherever you've got a, a standard that's reasonably high, there's always going to be people that are going to be chameleons or uh, charlatans that are, are going to be uh, faking it basically, and just as it were, as you said, wearing the hat with a name on it but it's not really in the heart. And I hope that all of us here on uh, YouTube would be people of the heart, people who are seeking to make reality out of what we're saying, not just pay lip service. Especially bearing in mind that I think you and I both believe that God is watching. And, and the Bible says God is not mocked, he cannot be fooled. And as you say, there will be a day of judgment when all of the secrets of men's hearts will be exposed. Anyway. So really, your point about there being people that discredit religions is just self-evident to me, and that would be true within Christianity as well, of course. Um, and I was also pleased to hear you say about how, I think you said you had some rocks around your neck. I don't know whether that was like um, Kabbalah things or crystals or what, but I completely agree with you that that is idolatry, that, uh, and that's an offense to God. Um, just to read you a little verse here from Acts, in the New Testament, Acts chapter uh, 14, the Apostle Paul, he says this to these idolatrous people uh, in a place called Lystra. He says, men, why are you doing this? We too are only men, human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it. In the past, he let all nations go their own way, yet he has not left himself without a testimony. And then he goes on to explain all the good things, the, the, the harvest, the crops, the, the houses, the friends, family, all the things that God gives us. And of course, how could we be worshipping rocks when we have such a great creator? Okay, he's invisible, but he's still nevertheless real. And the evidence for him is everywhere around us, even when we look in the mirror and we see um, how wonderfully we've been made. As the Psalms say, the Psalms of David, or Dawood, um, that God, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It's a fantastic psalm, that Psalm 139. I recommend it. Anyway, what I want to challenge you with is that you raised a few um, points um, about errors. You said you basically looked at all the different religions and you found they all had errors in it. And, and, and logically enough, you said, how could the, the creator of everything, the almighty God, um, inspire a religion that had errors in it? And that, of course, is absolutely right. And, and Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, uh, and God also says through Jesus, uh, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth, i.e. not through using idols. So I would completely agree with you that as well. And I would have the same um, modest operandi, the uh, same approach to religion as you, that I would only want to follow the true religion and I'm not interested in anything cultural uh, or just because of my upbringing. And um, again, yeah, any religion that's been changed by man that would be deplorable, that would no longer be divine, no longer be worthy of following, and certainly it would be worthless just to follow some human leader blindly. And you see that's how cults are generated and so many other things like that. People end up in disaster and sometimes in death when they do that. Think of the Jonestown massacre in, uh, in Peru, I think it was, back in the 70s, about 700 people poisoned themselves with cyanide just because they followed one guy, Jim Jones, who claimed to represent 
true uh, religion from God, but of course his life didn't match up to it. Anyway, the, I think the one thing that really leapt out of me, and I want to just finish with this, um, and maybe you could get back to me on this, just this one thing if you have time, and that is that you said, I couldn't believe in a religion where God could die. Uh, you saw that as an error. Uh, maybe you see that as a self-contradictory uh, notion. God is almighty and omnipotent and eternal, and living and the source of all life. How could God die? And that is, as the hymn writer puts it, uh, tis mystery all the immortal dies who can explore this strange design. And I know in the Muslim mind, the idea of the incarnation, that is God becoming a man, and the idea of the crucifixion, that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in human form, dying on the cross is an, is an anathema, something that you, you do not believe. And yet I feel that that is possible. For God, all things are possible. And as Jay says in one of his other videos, ours is the God, the God of the Bible, who enters into space time history, who shares our, our experiences, shares our joys and our sufferings, and has to take upon himself the burden of our sin. Now you say nothing in your testimony about how you became a Muslim, about sin, about forgiveness, about the knowledge of the true God, of how you can be right with God on Judgment Day, how you can be forgiven, um, how you can be reconciled to God. In fact, you say nothing at all about the content of Islam. You just say that you were disillusioned with hypocrites, and you met some real thinking people at camp, but you never really say why you become a Muslim. And I'd like to answer me really on that question, maybe two questions. Why is it impossible for God to become a man and die? Tell me why. And secondly, why did you become a Muslim? What is it about Islam that gives you so much hope? Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope this has been coherent. And uh, this is Neil, in case you forgot. Cheers.